In Greek mythology, there's this guy Sisyphus that's condemned to roll a rock up the hill. And every time he gets to the top of the hill, it rolls back over him all the way to the bottom. And then he has to do it again. And lobster fishing is exactly the same. You take a stack of traps, you put them on your boat, you bait them, you set them in the ocean, and then you come back and you pick up the stack of traps, stack them on your boat, and move them somewhere else. That's lobster fishing. We as a family used to go out on the boat all the time for fun and camping trips. And some days dad would take us out lobster fishing for fun. And some days he would get a babysitter. He was dragging me and my brother out there um, to go fishing with him. But after doing it for years and years and uh, learning to appreciate being out on the ocean every day, in a roundabout way I made a commitment to becoming a lobster fisherman. Channel Islands have a lot of things you're not going to find really anywhere else in the world. They're extremely dramatic. They're very remote, very separated from the coast of California. And one thing I always find fascinating is how different they are from each other, even though that they're really only a few miles apart. There's a lichen that grows in the cliffs out there at the Channel Islands, and it's pretty interesting. It only grows on cliff faces that are facing exactly due north. Lobsters are the ultimate prehistoric sea cockroach. They remind me a lot of dinosaurs, really. They're incredibly strong, they're very powerful creatures, and they're extremely susceptible to changes in their environment. And that could be moon phases, that could be swell movement, and we'll see a huge change in their behavior, even in the difference of a few millibars between high and low pressure. As far as superstitions go, my dad and I joke about them a lot. They're pretty present in the fishing industry, and you hear some like, no bananas in the boat, or no whistling in the wheelhouse because you might whistle up a storm, but we don't really subscribe to any of those. The connection between commercial fishing and big wave surfing is a strong one. I'm definitely not the first guy to do it. There's been a long line of surfers with a background in fishing. And the reason for that is because it's one of the few jobs where you can take off and go surfing whenever you want. While at the same time, you get to be out on the water fishing whenever you want, enjoying the ocean. And so there's a lot of nice days and there's a lot of days where it's just rough all day long. And you learn to just keep your mouth shut, don't complain, run through your gear, and then get in safe. One of the things I've found that's addicting about being a fisherman is that it drives you to find out who you really are. It's very similar to other endurance activities. It's a lot of sleepless hours and early mornings and you learn to push through those tough moments. And after you push through those tough moments, eventually you get to the dock, you deliver your catch, and you have your first day off and you wake up in your bed and you, you're like, yes, I did that. Probably the greatest thing I learned from my dad was work ethic. Being able to work hard is one of the most valuable things you can know, have, and be able to do. As a dad and watching so many other fathers introduce their sons to fishing, I wanted to make sure that he loved commercial fishing and not to push him into it very grateful that he enjoys this business.